Welcome everybody to today's webinar. I'm Megan Twentyman, the VoIP brand manager here at Soft Solutions. Most of you know me by now. Um, and Nisha is trying to join. She's having a technical difficulty, but it looks like she's just managed to log on um, now. Um, so she will unmute herself shortly and join us through this presentation. Um, the purpose of today's webinar is just to recap on all the changes that are happening with 3CX. We've had two months with lots and lots of changes and even reading everything and reviewing everything, things are getting missed by partners. So we wanted to just rerun through everything in this bite-sized webinar format, recapping the key changes that have happened over the last couple of months um, and the latest updates from 3CX as well. Um, so if you have questions, we'll have a Q&A a at the end, um, quick agenda for today, looking at the products in the range, the price changes that have occurred, product updates that have been released, um, what's coming that we know about in the roadmap, what's been taken away, resources and keeping up to date, and as I said, we will finish with that Q&A. So just to recap all the products in the range, there are now two free options for 3CX and that is Startup Free, which is the new um, cloud-based product. Startup is based on per extensions versus simultaneous call um, and it includes free hosting. It is still in beta, um, but we're seeing updates to it regularly and it looks like it's going to be an exciting new product within the range. We also have 3CX Free, which used to be the dedicated dedicated standard for simultaneous call. It's the same thing, same features. It's just called 3CX free now. Um, it remains as that for simultaneous calls. In terms of hosting, you can do DIY hosting or you can host it on Hosted by 3CX, which is now available for ANZ. With Hosted by 3CX, you get the first two months for free um, and then it is an annual chargeable service. For our paid annual subscription licenses and services, we have Startup Pro and there will be a 10 or 20 extension option. Still in beta, margins will be as per the partner program, so it will count towards your revenue targets and will be a great option for a number of customers. Then we have the dedicated professional, which is based on the simultaneous call model, the dedicated enterprise, which again is um, based on the simultaneous call model. And then we also have hosted by 3CX available for ANZ. Um, so that is optional, but it offers two months of free hosting and then chargeable for a full year. Um, just think that if you do the two months for free, it's good to do that with a trial license and then pay for the full year to align it with your license as well. So key things that have changed is you can no longer purchase new or upgrade the simultaneous call count of standard licenses. You can renew those licenses, whether they're perpetual or annual subscription. There are no new perpetual licenses available any longer. There were still a handful of enterprise ones a couple of months back. Um, renewals are still available for perpetual, but we are strongly encouraging people to trade those in and get the one year free trade in offer. It has been indicated that that trade-in offer is going to go away. So we would highly recommend that you um, get that done for your customers before that goes away and get onto the modern licensing option. In terms of pricing, um, as I mentioned, you can no longer purchase the standard. The renewals are continuing, but there has been a price increase on average of about 20%. That happened mid-August. Now, that is to the US dollar retail, which is what all of our New Zealand pricing is based off. The other price changes that happened largely unaffected us um, because we were based off the USD. Where we have issues is with the exchange rate because we all know that New Zealand dollar is very weak. So um, if your standard 16 simultaneous call license, for example, you don't um, renew that in time for an annual subscription, it will drop down to the 3CX free, which is the standard for simultaneous call, and your only upgrade options become to the pro or enterprise solution. So it's really imperative that you don't let licenses lapse. Um, Again, with perpetual licenses, once they lapse, there will be a forced trade into an annual subscription. Um, and as I mentioned, that one year is going away. 
Um, as I mentioned, we're largely unaffected by 3CX's changes to the USD retail. Hosted by 3CX had already increased. That was announced in July. Um, it's two months for free, as I mentioned earlier, and then um, you carry on. Anybody that was partway through a 12-month free option with hosted by 3CX, that continues to the end of that date. Um, Pricing for the hosted is based on the simultaneous call count, and if you increase your PBX simultaneous call, you also need to increase your hosting accordingly. So that's just something to remember as well. So the other thing I mentioned there was about the exchange rate. We're actually seeing the New Zealand dollar at its weakest since 2009. Um, so we are watching and monitoring that, and um, you will have seen that there's been price increases put in place for the beginning of October that went into our system yesterday. Um, but we're doing everything that we can. Everything is based on what's happening with that New Zealand dollar. Now, I do have Anisha on the line with us now, um, and I'm going to ask her to walk you through all the changes and updates that have occurred with updates four and five that have gone live in the last couple of months. Um, and I'm going to be her little mouse clicker for the presentation, so I apologise in advance if I'm not quite up to speed with where she's at. Um, so I'm going to hand over to Anisha now. Thank you, Megan. Um, hi, everyone. Anisha here. So well, let's dive into the um, updates. So an update four for version 18. Uh, it went live in mid-July, so it's been around for quite a while now with us. Um, and the key enhancements in update four was uh, the improved receptionist view, uh, better app quality, uh, being able to set office hours, uh, setting friendly name, uh, live chat changes, which um, were further improved in update five, which we'll look at soon, and of course all the normal tweaks and updates. Um, so to ensure um, to be able to use the receptionist um, view, you need to ensure that the user is designated as a receptionist, um, and you can do so in the management console. Otherwise, your features won't show. So just make sure that you do that. Um, also, in terms of setting office hours and break times, um, you can do so in the web client. So if you go to the web client, uh, go to settings, go to status, and go to status scheduler, um, and you can do so from there. So that's no longer in the management console. And also, um, before a new user can use the 36 talk or meet, um, it's 36 talk or meet now, but it's still referred to some as web meeting. Um, so anyways, to be um, before a new user can use the Resex Talk and Meet, um, the friendly name needs to be set and you can set that on the web client. And um, let's move on to the update five, which focuses on live chat changes. Thanks, Megan. So an update five, so update five for version 18 went live this month, so September. And the key enhancements in Update 5 is around the live chat changer. So um, there is now WhatsApp integration. So WhatsApp now has an API. So 3CX can hook into the back end to connect it up for business communication. So WhatsApp is a key business communication tool. Um, it's very popular and very widely used. Uh, so to enable the WhatsApp feature um, in the dedicated instance, you can do so by adding the functionality in the management console. And if you're in startup, um, a few startup, then you can do so in the web client. Uh, also, there's some amazing new live chat functions, such as um, being able to do customizations and personalizations, and these can be controlled from the web client, um, although you do need admin rights, so don't worry. Um, it's not that just anyone can go around and do this, um, only those with admin rights can change these. Uh, also, these um, SMS and MMS improvements, um, although we hope to announce New Zealand service for this very, very soon. And um, continuing on with update five. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, so continuing on with update five, um, uh, one of the key points is that um, so in update four, uh, users were able to control their own status schedules. Um, now in update five, the admin um, users can control the statuses of the whole team. So that's um, very exciting. And also added into the final update five release was the mention of a number of end of life IP phones. Uh, what this means is that what this means is that phones that are obsolete from the manufacturers have been removed from the supported phones list for 3CX. Uh, so these will continue to work um, for those that are already deployed, but auto provision support um, has been removed. So um, any changes um, will require manual configuration. 
change. Uh, of course, in update five, as usual, there's all the normal tweaks and updates as well. Uh, in terms of the mobile apps, the iOS and Android apps uh, were updated straight after the update five release. Uh, so the, these apps can also handle the new messaging function, um, for example, WhatsApp. And uh, just the key thing to note here is the apps no longer work with the older versions of 3CX, um, although this was prefaced many months ago. Uh, also, there was a hotfix um, in update five, and that's for an issue with upset uh, WhatsApp intermittent issues. Um, and the PBX was not affected, but I'm pleased to ensure that it is still updated. And I'll pass it back to Megan. So that was all the updates. Awesome. Thanks for that, Anisha. And yeah, just to reiterate there, the um, hot fix that came out the next day after update five was for, uh, there was an intermittent issue where the odd person was getting blank messages from WhatsApp and that was the fix um, for that. It didn't actually affect the PBX. So what we do know about the roadmap is that update six has been worked on right now. We're expecting to see an alpha very, very soon. Um, there are plans to upgrade the web client um, and pave the way for the future, um, including improved reporting. Um, there'll be the normal updates and tweaks. Um, we do know that the startup group mode, um, which is multi-tenancy, um, is being worked on, and that's for being able to separate functions and users and groups and applying those settings. Um, the example that they used in the roadmap description was groups in different time zones and you can apply a setting to each specific group. So um, it's really getting ready for that multi-tenancy um, scenario. So startup still is in beta. Um, it was indicated to go live by end of September, but it looks like that's going to be um, into October now. Um, and we'll just keep watching for updates. Um, I'm stalking the forums and um, the blogs and the updates as they come through. Um, so there has been a few things taken away through update four and five. So key things there is the instance manager was removed with the release, final release of update five. Now the instance manager, was, the purpose of it was for monitoring um, your mass, and doing mass updates of your Linux based systems. Um, so in update four, they released that feature to be able to install updates automatically one month after release. So that's a setting you can set up in the management console. Um, in terms of monitoring, there are products that do monitoring far better than the instance manager and 3CX has drawn back and said we need to focus on our core purpose which is a communication solution um, and allow our partners to use their um, monitoring tools, their RMM tools that they are using. The other thing we know is going to be removed in update six is Facebook. Um, that is in favor of WhatsApp communication, which has just come in. Um, they're waiting for Facebook to update the back end of the API. So I read a bit of a detailed blog about this and it was if any 3CX customer made a certain specific change to Facebook once these changes come into effect, um, it could actually take it down for all 3CX customers and affects 3CX's integration in total. So um, it is definitely a security thing that they're going, we can't have customers go completely offline because of one person's changes. Um, the other thing that was announced um, back at Update 4, I believe, was that the Microsoft Teams integration is now in maintenance mode. Um, this is, they no longer plan to do any further integration planning and it will eventually come out of 3CX. We are looking at third party integrations for Microsoft Teams, however they will not be supported by 3CX, they'll be supported by the third party company that makes that integration. Um, so that's a really important thing. The other one that was announced um, mid-September was the withdrawal of Raspberry Pi 4 support for on-prem 3CX deployments. The SBC on a Raspberry Pi 4 still remains. Most of our customers, well most, that's a gross generalization, a large amount of our customers use Raspberry Pis for the SBC, um, but you know those for small on-prem deployments were using them. So they're encouraging people to move to hosted by 3CX or another option. Um, as you are aware, we do have the um, Kofatel um, NUC devices available, which come preloaded with 3CX for an on-prem deployment as well. Um, the other thing I noticed um, just in the last couple of days is that the um, comparison document between 3CX and Teams, which was kind of a working together type document, um, that has been removed from the current marketing kit and a new and updated version will be available in due course. So I'm just watching for any further updates to that marketing kit. 
Um, so there was a major email announcement from 3CX in mid-September around their support terms. Now, a lot of this was stuff that we knew, but they were actually writing it down and defining it, which has always been that if you're using non-custom, non-supported firmwares, that type of thing, um, you need to be on the stock standard to get support from 3CX. Um, so one of the announcements was a, that small self-managed instances their support would be removed and they were uh, urging customers to migrate to hosted by 3CX or startup. I asked for a clarification and got a definition of a small self-managed instance. That is anything 32 simultaneous calls and below. So for New Zealand those can be quite large deployments because we have a lot of very small businesses here. Um, the thinking from 3CX, of course, is to standardise everything and have it standardised, and that's great that we now have hosted by 3CX because most of those licences will be running on a dedicated paid licence. Um, but then startup is there as an option as well. Um, they're obviously strongly encouraging everybody to use the supported SIP trunks and IP phones, um, and they don't want unsupported configuration. So custom integrations are fantastic, and they are supported by the maker of those custom integrations. So we do a lot of work with the company in Singapore um, and they offer the support. They are highly um, enabled around 3CX so we have real confidence that they can deliver the support that is needed for that. Um, in terms of security and anti-fraud, they were just um, laying out that the config is the responsibility of the system admin um, and 3CX will only invest in anything that is directly related to a security issue in their own software, not in how it's been configured or what's been integrated with it. That's not their responsibility. Their responsibility lays with their 3CX communications tool. Um, also for support, they've had a lot of customers globally that um, just give their NFR license key when they ask for support from 3CX. They're saying, you must give the correct subscription key for your customer. So just a reminder that Soft Solutions offers free first level support via our ticketing system, which is an email into VoIP support at softsoul.co.nz. This remains unchanged. Um, where we may encounter difficulties is if we need to escalate trickier things, um, but we will draw on the experience of our senior engineer who has over eight over nine years now, experience around 3CX. Um, a lot of the queries that we get are more about best practice and how do we do this um, type scenarios versus an actual problem with 3CX itself. So we will continue to offer that service um, and it's something that we um, you know, think is really important for our community here in New Zealand. So in terms of resources, 3CX run their own webinars. There haven't been any for a few weeks, but they'll be gearing up for um, new ones that are coming. Um, obviously, we run webinars one, two, three, sometimes four a month. Um, but attending those or registering and getting the recording is really important. Um, reaching out to us if you've got questions. I don't always know the answer, but I will try and find out the answers for you. Um, 3CX's marketing kit, um, that's available in your downloads menu in your partner portal. And as I said, that Teams ones just come out of there. Um, 3CX's website continues to update and evolve, and this is happening constantly. Pretty much every day I look, there's something slightly changed that their marketing team are working on there. Um, the pricing and product comparison page is a really, really useful tool. The um, pricing is US dollar retail, so you can convert that with um, our exchange rate, which I hate to tell you is trading at 0 0.55 today. Um, yesterday it was 0 0.54. Um, and it shows the additions and the USD retail pricing. And I've got a couple of screenshots on the next slide that I'll just show you so that you don't get caught in some little traps there. Um, obviously there's the sales pages and the configuration guides. So just when you go to the um, pricing page, um, at the top there's this link for hosted or self-managed. So whichever one's blacked out is what you're looking at. So um, it's a little bit small, but um, on here you can see a dedicated pro shows as $295 US on hosted and $145 US on self-managed. And that's because the difference, the $150 uh, difference, is the hosted by 3CX charge um, because that's incorporated into the pricing and it is for a four simultaneous call. If you move up the users, then it will move the pricing as well. Um, but obviously you can get all up-to-date New Zealand dollar pricing off our website or you can download a price list from in our reseller portal. 
Um, but, um, you know, it's just a matter of doing that. The other thing on that um, resources page, you get to the bottom of the additions and there's a little plus sign for more info. If you click that and expand it, you actually get line by line all the features that are within the products and the comparison. That is a really, really useful tool and powerful. So pulling that over um, into documentation and that type of thing is very useful for you. So things that I can tell you, so there's official announcements coming, so I'm a little ahead of 3CX, um, but they are definitely coming to New Zealand. They'll be in town from the 31st of October to the 2nd of November. Um, so that will be Yomez and Sebastian, along with Nicholas Perez, who is 3CX's um, global trainer. Um, we do know that they will be running advanced technical training in Auckland in person on Tuesday, the 1st of November. Venue still being confirmed by them. They hope to have that soon and they will send out the official announcement. Um, alongside that, we will be running a physical event here in Auckland, which is looking like Wednesday, the 2nd of November. It will be in the morning, um, and that will be where we have all the hardware out. We'll give some keynote addresses and just do these updates in person and really just get our community into the one room to be able to mix and mingle. Um, stay tuned to our communications. So the VoIP monthly newsletter just went out on Wednesday. If you haven't seen that, reach out to us and we'll get you a copy. Our weekly newsletter goes out each month, which has the event sections and bits and pieces there. And obviously I post regularly to the LinkedIn Soft Solutions VoIP community group, which is a closed group. And I do stop people from overseas trying to join that. I'm the gatekeeper for that group. Um, you are welcome to post and add messages within there, but we use it really as a communication in the first instance and then I wrap it all up in that VoIP monthly newsletter. And that brings us to the end of today's webinar. So thank you all for joining. If anybody has any questions, please feel free to throw those into the questions box and I will answer those for you. Um, if any questions come up afterwards, you can reach out to me directly or um, via the VoIP at um, SoftSoul. Um, Email address, it's, it, it's Thursday. It's been a long week for a short week. Um, okay, first question. How long the team's integration will stay on 3CX? No, we don't have an official date, just like they've sort of indicated that the Raspberry Pi 4 may or may not be withdrawn for the SBC. We don't have a time frame on that. Um, what we know with teams is that there'll be no further development, um, but um, it will still be, be there from what we can see until at least the end of version 18, but I don't know how many more updates are going to go before they would be looking at another major um, version release and that type of thing. So we still know that there's a lot of work as per their roadmap that they released publicly. Um, that's going to happen with update six and startup going live. So I would imagine that when we get to there, we will end a massive um, change protocol and they'll pause for a minute um, and then look at what's next because there's always something new to um, head down the track with. Uh, mobile app updates, are they done automatically or manually? So it's when you update the apps on your actual Android or iOS phone so they'll be in the appropriate stores um, and then they will update um, from there. So mine, I actually run test flight on my Apple iOS um, iPhone um, so I actually get it before everybody else so I actually get the betas so that's the one thing with beta that I actually do use is the um, mobile app um, because I just have that set in test flight so that was automatically pushed out to my phone via test flight for that um, there was a beta of the mobile apps and it was live for a day before they went live with the new apps because they needed to have the WhatsApp communication tool within the um, mobile apps. So um, yeah, most people keep their phone apps up to date um, fairly regularly. Just give it a second in case there's any other questions. Uh, yes, 3CX send out direct email invitations to their webinars and events. Um, they just put a pause on some of their webinars um, over the last few weeks um, due to so much change happening and waiting to do the big announcement of obviously when Startup goes live. Um, so those come out from Yulmaz. Um, 
usually it's from his yk at 3cx.com email address inviting you to the webinars and they run in Australian Eastern Standard Time so usually about two o'clock Australian Eastern Standard so four o'clock once they join us on Daylight Savings Time this weekend. Um, in terms of the technical training those invitations will also be sent out from 3cx but we will publish that information as soon as we have it as well. Places will be limited um, and we understand that this will be new material being delivered so different to the certifications we've seen before but again we just have to wait um, for those official announcements from 3CX. Cool it looks like that might be it. If you do think of any other questions feel free to reach out to me directly megan at softsoul.co.nz or voip at softsoul.co.nz um, do we email YK to register? Wait till the um, invitation comes out. Um, so you will actually get an invitation. There will be a landing page they will use for the actual technical trainings. They will use Eventbrite um, to run those registrations. For their own webinars, they have a web page that will take those um, invites. So don't swamp Yomaz with asking for um, registrations because he doesn't have any dates or anything as yet or registration pages but those do come out and they come to the master email address of all 3CX partners so you'll definitely get those. So we need to wrap it up. Okay hang on sorry we're just getting a whole heap of more questions. Um, will 3CX support Raspberry Pi 4 as an SBC for the foreseeable future? Yes they are that is what they announced on their um, blog that it is only the on-prem deployments that are immediately affected but they have prefaced that that could go away in the future. So um, we already have the NX32 Lite units that can be run as on-prem or SBC, um, and we will be getting smaller SBC um, devices once they are certified and made available to distributors around the globe to purchase. Um, so that will, at, at this stage, it's status quo with the Raspberry Pi for an SBC. Awesome. All right, we're going to wrap that up because we're past our bite size webinar time. Thank you very much to everybody for joining us. You will get a copy of the recording. Um, and if you have any questions, just reach out to us and we'd be more than happy to answer those. So thanks, everyone. <laughs>